Hello and welcome to Lab 300 of the Autonomous Data Warehouse Hands-On Workshop. Navigate to this lab by selecting the menu in the upper left and select Machine Learning. Now in this lab, you're going to assume the persona of Heather, who's a data scientist, machine learning expert for Alpha Office. And she spent most of her time over the past couple of years extracting and preparing data for analysis. Large volumes of data need to be extracted and processed meaning she spends most of her time waiting for jobs to finish, very little time analyzing the data. And demands from marketing are forcing really a new approach whereby the data remains in the data warehouse and is processed there. Alternative cloud solutions are more complicated. You have to use a separate mining platform and there's really no direct out of the box processes to analyze the data in place. And when she looked at Oracle, she found that machine learning is supported. She doesn't have to move the data and it's going to be much, much faster. And turnaround time on the analysis is going to be much shorter. She can also use Apache Zeppelin so that she can work with her colleagues together on it, annotate the results, uh, add notations, use Markdown directly in place with the analysis. So start by logging into Compute. And we're going to go to the console. And the first thing we're going to do is create a bucket to upload the data set. Now, the data set separate from the data we've been working with so far. Uh, it is a, uh, we'll create the bucket name, it's ADWC. The data set is 100,000 rows of, uh, it's 100,000 rows of data that sits in a CSV file. And we're gonna download that uh, by right clicking on the file, save it to uh, my downloads directory. And while I'm at it, uh, we're gonna take a look at the other files. Might as well download them. On the, load them as well. Uh, you can see don't click on them. You need to right click on them. Otherwise, it, some of them may actually show it in the preview. So sales.dva and the credit scoring uh, one and the predictions, those are ones we're going to be using. So download those. And the data set, as I said, it's 100,000 rows of various information about our customers. The exercise is to understand what variables predict good credit, identify the customers with potential good credit and issue a marketing cam campaign to them. That's the business problem. Now, once you've created the bucket, ADWC, you select the bucket. All you do is select upload object, browse, select the file and upload it. Really only take a few seconds. And once we've got that, we're going to move on to identity back all the way down to the bottom there, identity and users. We need to create a database credential for the users. And the database credential is something uh, we're, we're going to, the token is going to be used as part of the credential creation process. So you've already got uh, tokens there already. Um, just take a look at that again. You've done that for OAC. I've got a separate one for ADWC as well. I'm not going to create a third one. You could actually use one for, uh, for the purposes of both OAC as well as ADWC. So let's move on. And we are going to create the credential. You're just going to cut and paste from the, from the lab document, change the uh, name, Derek Cameron, as well as the authentication token that you just created. And once you execute it, you should get a message. PL SQL procedure is, is completed. And then we can move on. Before we do that, we do need to create the table. And there it is there. You can see how many columns they are. And there's just an enormous number of potential variables that might help us predict good credit. Uh, be complicated to do that manually. We're going to grant select to pub public because we're not using, we're using admin at this point but we're actually going to be in Zeppelin, going to be using ADWC WC user. So right click on the table, select import and select cloud storage. Uh, there is a URL. You'll have to, uh, there's instructions on how that looks in the lab documentation. I'll just paste it here. I hit preview the data. It's going to read the data. Now we don't actually have to make any changes to this. You could potentially make changes to it on the import process to keep things simple. We'll just, uh, we just created a copy exactly as it needed to be. 
So it doesn't take all that long. There's 100,000 rows, so it will take maybe a couple of minutes. And you'll get this kind of a message when it's finished. And let's just very quickly confirm that the rows are there that we're interested in. You can click on first the uh, columns and then the data. And when you do that, you can right click and say count rows. You should see 100,000 rows and there they are. Now let's uh, go back into Oracle Cloud and the rest of the time we're gonna spend here really is gonna be in Zeppelin. So first thing is first, we're gonna select administration, go into log in with the admin user and we're gonna create a new user. Now this is actually a database user. When you select administration, um, manage ML users, um, you are prompted again to log in with the administrator account given the permissions are slightly different. So select admin, select login. We're gonna create a new user called ADWC underscore WS. That's a work ADWC workshop user. And once we create that user, it actually ends up being a database user. Uh, for those of you familiar with the Oracle database, uh, if you go into SQL developer, you'll see an ADWC WS user. Uh, give it a password, hit create, and from there, you just hit the home button in the upper right, and you log into ADWC WS. So very uh, simple to go from the creation of the user to directly into, into that user and into Zeppelin. Here it is here, uh, just a quick, take a look at the examples. These are just templates, anomaly detection association rules. You can read them for yourself, attribute importance. We're going to be using, uh, we're going to be using, I uh, believe we're going to be using attribute importance. So just select the import. We're importing a pre-built credit prediction notebook, Apache Zeppelin notebook. Uh, very, very easy to share your work, collaborate on a single one. Now, the first thing you do have to do is to select that, uh, the binding. And once you do that, uh, you'll, you just have to execute the little arrow there, just hit execute. Uh, there's a number of, uh, of those icons. We'll go through them in a minute. Um, you can see in the menu, you've got uh, the ability to add these regions. It's like a dashboard. You add regions, you can move it around, you can change the size of it. You can see the code underneath it. You can uh, execute code uh, and you've got various formats. Markdown, we're looking actually at Markdown right now. Uh, if you're familiar with Markdown, the cell uh, lab was built on Markdown, by the way. And so review Z Apache Zeppelin basics. There's just some documentation, some convenience links for you here. Um, again, let's take a look at some of those icons. Um, if you click on the second icon there, it's just show the editor or not. So you can see the underlying markdown, see the percent MD up there. Uh, it's either percent MD, percent script for PL SQL, and percent SQL for raw SQL. Uh, so to hide that, and you can hide the output completely if it gets too cluttered. And then lastly, again, we've done this before. Click on the click on the uh, settings, and you can change those. So Go ahead and execute. It's already it's already executed. So I know the code is actually not quite right there. I've made a fix to it, but this recording is already complete. And so it might look a little bit different. And let's move down and we've, uh, we're gonna show the available tables, very simple, select table name from union user tables. And we also selecting the views. So we're actually merging the views and the tables. And those are the two views that we just created. Uh, now show the potential variables we're, we're using. And so these are all the columns that are in the credit rating table. And it's a lot of them, about 100, uh, over 100. Uh, so, and let's review the credit scoring data itself. All we're doing is saying select star from the credit scoring view. And we're just gonna grab the first 100 rows just to give you a feel for what's in there. Feel free to scroll around and take a look at that. So there's a the customer ID, things like the age, the marital status, the occupation, the you know all sorts of interesting things. 
and there's good credit and then there's i wouldn't call it bad credit but it's other credit and so we're going to be predicting these values as we move through this workshop so let's let's uh, we're going to move down to review data by mode of job contracts and income it's a basic example of chart of visualization in zeppelin so we're just going to acclimate you to the various visualizations and if you click on settings, you'll see, for example, in this chart, how it's constructed. All you do is drag the fields from your SQL down into the various placeholders for the different uh, charts. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, another example is just taking a look at the data, getting a feel for it. Uh, alternative presentation style, we're looking at pie charts. Uh, you've got bar charts, pie charts, uh, line line charts, scatter charts. Um, nothing like what's in data visualization, which is Lab 400, but this is a convenient place to just take a look at the data and see what it looks like. Here's just another one. It's one of the scatter, scatter diagrams uh, looking, at, uh, looking at data slightly differently. You can see it there by age, tenure, loan type, and income. So, so convenient to not have to like bounce back and forth between DV, but you will be using DV when you get into the serious uh, analysis after you've run the data mining algorithms. And so first let's bin the variables. This is something that data scientists do all the time is like, let me take a, a look at how the data is distributed by variable. And that first one actually bins everything, but we're gonna just take a look at uh, we're just going to look at one um, one aspect of the data, and uh, and it's by age. We're just taking a look at the age bin, but all 100 variables have binned in less than a second, all 100,000 rows processed with 100 variables. So enough, enough simple charting. Let's run some machine learning algorithms. So let's get serious about this. We've gotten lucky by uh, finding the solution to our problem by looking at a pie chart. We might have. But it's not that easy. We have a lot of variables and we need machine learning to take a look at large data volumes and large numbers of variables. And first, let's take a look at machine learning's attribute importance algorithm and specifically the DBMS predictive analytics uh, explained simplest version of it. The OML feature selection machine learning algorithms automatically sift through all the input variables or attributes looking for those variables that have the strongest correlation with another key variable, and that is our credit rating. And first, so Heather's going to be looking at these variables and running this. So let's take a look at the create the uh, machine learning. You'll see it right there. DBMS execute immediate drop the explain, and then she executes it and it turns red when it executes. And so it'll take a few seconds. And then once it's completed, you can actually look at the top attributes. So what attributes explain this thing that we're interested in? That is good credit. What, what is important? Well, not surprisingly, things like wealth, things like income. Uh, these things obviously factor into whether or not you might have a good credit rating. Now, these are a little bit uh, not aligned quite properly. They should be when you actually use your uh, laptop to do this. I had to set the resolution lower so things are kind of scrunched a little just for the recording. Now display the top end attributes for maximum credit card spend amount. And this is something else we want to take a look at. And so we execute that. But let's just take a look at creating a predictive model to target good credit customers. Now that we've understood the data a bit more, Let's take a look at uh, look at the process itself. And the process includes a problem definition, understanding the problem, gathering the data and preparing it. A lot of that's been done. Building the model, which is where we're at, and then looking at deploying that, which is just later in this Zeppelin workbook. You can read the notes there. I'm not going to read them verbatim, um, but it gives you a good understanding if you're a lay person on exactly what machine learning is and, and just how it works. We're going to actually use 60% of the data to train it to say, hey, this is what we know about the data, about the customers, and we know which ones have good credit. Then we're going to say, but 40%, uh, we're going to then take input variables, input customers, and then go on to predict as new customers, 
uh, are, as new customers are part of Alpha Office, we're gonna predict their credit on the fly. So this gives you some insight into what's happening under the covers there. Um, you can read it for yourself. Again, it's not actually as complicated as it looks. It's really simple SQL statements. You know, if you know SQL, you can just look at look at the code and go, yeah, I, I, I get that. Uh, some of it's commented out there, but execute that. It only takes a few seconds. And then what we do is we take a look at how effective the model is and what variables are used to predict good credit. So we're gonna apply the model to new customers and show those customers most likely to have good credit. And there it is there. So the customer ID, and you can look at the probability of good credit. There's a percentage there. Um, so let's take another, uh, Let's. this needs to be reproducible. So I'm gonna drop, uh, in this case, actually we don't have one, but if you need to rerun this, uh, given that it does sampling, the results might be a little bit different each time. Um, we've set it up so that you can rerun it uh, multiple times. So let's take a look at reviewing the credit scoring new predictions table. So we're going to take new predictions and say, okay, we've got we've got new customers. Let's predict their good credit, and let's take a look at that. And then finally, uh, update, apply a, a machine learning model to a single record in transactional application. And so uh, using RITS uh, as well, 2000, so there's the input variables and just suggest that you change gold to silver to see the change there. And I just want to conclude that, you know, machine learning is built into the database engine. You can leave the data in place. You can execute all this in a matter of seconds on millions, hundreds of millions, and even billions of rows. And so it's gonna vastly uh, improve the speed with which you can uh, analyze the data and understand it.